Okay, so here we are on the third go. Uh, I have brought uh, Sue One or somebody at Sue One back in on the screen because yesterday it took her a little while to load, didn't it? So it's a lot quicker if I tested it. But here's where we left off and saved it as our EMB file, which is the master file. Okay. So uh, first off, I think what I say to you is. Uh, put your USB stick in the side of your laptop. Hear that noise? That was my USB stick going in. I just want to, I'll go up to hoop. Although it's, my machine is reporting, it's my GR size hoop. I will just go up to hoop and bring in my hoop. Now, I will just, just slightly uh, come out of full size so that I think that she's uh, centralized in my hoop. Now, Deborah, because we were talking yesterday and you were using your background uh, drawing artwork, you hadn't taken the little letters off the bottom, which I had already done. I tried to explain to you yesterday on the phone that your uh, little girl would be slightly up the picture because it would it would centralise the entire page, not just your little girl. So uh, I say to you right now, bring your hoop up, as I've just done. Press the hoop button, bring your hoop up. That is your corresponding hoop, the size that you want, as I've just done. Then come over to layout, come down to define work area. Uh, sorry, that's something else we haven't talked about. Let me take, sorry, I'm going ahead of myself here. Take the hoop off, yeah? Draw a box around her so you've selected all, yeah? Come down to alter center to work area. Now your picture is gone and hit enter and she will slightly move. Mine just slightly moved. Yours will definitely move. Then put your hoop on up here, yoo -hoo, up here, put your hoop on. So now you know that she is absolutely centred in your hoop, okay? Without the wording and everything else. Now, uh, I, as you heard, I just put my USB stick in. I can come up here to write. I know it's my GR hoop, the biggest one that I've got. I, but let's have a look. If I went to one that's pretty big, uh, SQ23, no, see she's, she won't fit, so I'm going to have to use my GR and she will fit. So then I go to write design, which then picks up Ooh, a problem. Oh well, I had a problem and it decided I didn't have a problem, oh, one of those things. So Sue one as it's going to report as a JPX file for me for my uh, Janome machine. My USB uh, thing, I'll come down. And what are we putting this under? Uh, oh, 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 crafties, Valentines, whatever. Uh, I think as this is kind of like personalised, I'll put it under the block. Yeah, I got lots of things I've done. This is the quilt I was doing before. Mug rug. I could actually make, if I click on it, I can make a folder and I can say, uh, sun bonnet suit and make, make another folder. Yeah. So now I can open sun bonnet suit, sue one and say, go on then, write it to my stick, which is just done. Now I can take my stick out and you'll hear the noise. Gone. So now she is on my stick, ready to go. So that's the first thing. Now as we discussed yesterday, I showed you two methods. One was by printing out uh, the actual applique shapes and scanning it back in. 
or making the PES file or in my case a Jeff file so that we could bring in the Jeff file. We went through that yesterday, but I'm just going to physically do this now. So output design, I want to go to print preview. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. That gives me my little ladies that, that will um, I can use for uh, centralizing on my fabric. But the next two plate pages, next page are the actual shapes. Now, <coughs> you could print this out and scan it back in, but to be honest with you, uh, if I come out of this for a second, come out, oh, close, come out of that for a second, and I go to print design and change my print design from um going to my actual printer microsoft print to pdf can you see this yeah change it to that okay that's just setting the printer up it's actually done it so i because we already set up what we wanted so i can go now i think it's in Crafty so and so's 2001, somebody sue, where are you? Somebody sue. It's going to be, and let me just call it uh, applique. Applique, okay? Save. So that's now printing it. Hopefully. Taking a minute. But that's done it. Okay. I'll just uh, quiet it down. Uh, let's go to now my silhouette and open that back up. Because I'm trying to, I, I'm offering you things to do, but I'm trying to think of how this will affect you. Yeah. So I'm opening up Silhouette Studio now. I say to PDF rather than print it out and then scan it back in, which is basically the same thing, but you're just doing lots more work. Uh, let's see if that works for me. I don't know. Let's see, because I don't normally do it this way. Oh, come on, Studio. Open up. There we go. Come on, babies. There we are. Right, so file. open so there it is applique pdf let's see what happens okay it's gonna ask me a few questions i expect current page is one i actually want two and three don't i uh I, want, I don't want the first one because that's just going to help me align. So I definitely want page two, which is uh, cut the pieces. Group, import as image. I don't want it grouped. Import. Let's see, just see what happens. Okay. Oh yeah, look, see, not grouped. So I can just, these are 100% shapes. I can just say, yeah, those are the shapes I want. All of this that's left on my board, I don't want. Delete. Then I want to stay within the same file so I can file, and this time merge, which means I'm bringing in a secondary file into the same thing. Merge this time. Merge. Go back to applique PDF. Okay.
<clears throat> oh, didn't ask me. Didn't flipping ask me, did it? I don't want that. Escape. Escape. Well, oh, no. Delete. I didn't want that. So, okay, maybe I need to do it. It's, it's not helping me, so I'll go open again, which will open maybe another page, right? But I'm opening it instead of merging it. I think it... Well, okay, uh, that works. So I don't want page one. I don't want page two. I want page three this time. Import as a vector. No, I don't want it grouped. Import. Yeah, it did open a secondary file. Not a problem. I want the hat. And I want the arm. And I'll draw a box around everything else that's left on the screen and say delete because I didn't want it. Now, these two, oomp and shift to copy the other. Right click, copy. Go back to my original file where I had the other people. And... Paste. Oh, it's come up over the top, but I can separate them out, yeah? So, there's the arm. There's the skirt. There's the hat, yeah? So, now, uh, I wrote that to PGF, brought the PGF in, ungrouped, and brought them in. And now, I've got all the same cut lines as I would have had if I were to do it the other method. So I'm not going to save this. I am going to, uh, I'm going to exit out of that page. Do I want to save it? No. I don't know whether I did it actually. Uh, uh, exit out of that page. Do I want to save it? No. Because I'm going to go back and do it the way I prefer to do things, which is to open... The uh, Jeff file that I made. Okay. As we did yesterday. And we just get rid of. Over here. I just put. All the top stitching on top of one another. Go away. Don't want you. 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 And then, if it's, yeah, always trying to act nicely. It's running slow for me because I've got so many things open. Yeah, oh, what well, it kind of did. Right, so there we are. Encaps it encapsulate all of that lot and say delete because I don't want you. Right. And exactly as where we were yesterday, these again are the applique cut lines where we don't want this or that. So... Uh, the flesh tones that I want are these pieces. So I'm literally just doing it again as we did yesterday, yeah? Uh, this is exactly what we did yesterday. But you can see now, Deborah, that it is possible. Let's use my keyboard to nudge that up above the two-inch line. Right, so, and I will just simply group that so it doesn't move uh so just like yesterday uh but now i've showed you that you can using the printout from the applique in hatch you can make those and um, print them out or print them as a pdf and then bring it in as a pdf as long as it's ungrouped and what have you and use those it will give you the definition lines that you're requiring. Or you can do it this way around. Bring in your PES file, bring in your Jeff file, and get rid of your embroidery, and again, use that. Whichever way you do it, they are precise, exact measurements of what we've drawn in Hatch. So it's all going to work. All right, so we've talked about... Uh, um, we want i want to do uh, i needed eight by two inches well this is a lot bigger i have just gone over and uh press this with um best press which is a, which is a starch uh but also 
uh, we need to uh, put backing on it before we use it. Now I don't need such a big piece so to be honest with you I could cut this down. Uh, this is two and a half inches which should be more than enough because we only really wanted two inches so as long as there I don't need that bit. So and I don't even need them as much as that so I could well I won't cut it off because who knows but anyway so this is a nice bit of uh, fabric flesh coloured which is what we want I cut it at two and a half inches by however wide it was uh, the next thing that we need to do is to take a bit of heat and bond and affix it to heat and bond um, as you can see, my heat and bond is quite a uh, bit of a <laughs> mismatch because I'm forever cutting bits and pieces out of it. You could do this with a ruler. I tend to do it by eye because I've done it an awful lot. Yeah, so I'm literally just oops, cutting by eye what I want. See, there we are. Put that all away. Uh, I've now got my strip with the heat and bond. It's uh, got the scratchy side this way up. I'm going to lay the material over the top like this. I'm going to take it to my iron and hold the iron. Cut the seconds. Move the iron. Cut the seconds. Move the iron. Cut the seconds. I am not going to scrub with the iron because I don't want to move the glue around I want it to just sink in to the back of the fabric uh, having done that um, I need to let it cool uh, it's no good trying to take the paper off the back when it's warm because you're going to uh, set the good glue so you know you need to yeah, it is now. I put it on a cold surface. Obviously, this mat. Now the glue is cold, so I can take a corner, pull up. I hope you can see this in the camera. If I uh, move it around, can you see all that lovely glue is stuck to the back of that fabric? Then I get my. Uh, this is my silhouette mat. As I say, I'm not using the Great Big Cameo one, I'm just using the one that I usually use. And uh, placing it uh, down, making sure I'm in the top line, because, you know, it's quite precise on this one. Yeah, I'm just pressing that down on my mat. And that's what I'm going to be cutting my... Um, little uh, shapes from for the flesh coloured shapes so you've just seen me lay down and prepare the material with the heat and bond on the back and i put it across my mat which is you know, this is a replica of my mat and i i did cut two and a half inches so i got plenty of space for this uh, then i will go to my send menu uh, uh, and the settings that I have in here, as you will see, fabric, thin cotton print. It's not a cotton print, but it is a thin cotton, yeah. Uh, my auto, I need to tell it to cut. I want it to cut. Uh, it's, oh, no tool. It's my auto blade, so I don't know why it says that. But, the, you know, I want it to cut edge, which is what it's going to do. And as I say to you, I always put up the two passes, yeah? Now, this time, you will see down here, my machine is report is ready because I've turned it on and I'm ready to go. So I'm just going to uh, align the mat. You can't see this off camera. But uh, I'm aligning the mat. And it's ready to go. So then I'll come back to the machine and press send. 
and you may hear these noises in the background. Where it's actually cutting it. Now I'm going to go and take it out of the machine and I'll show you on the other camera. So now I've just brought this back up to my table. You hear it all cutting out the background and I can lift my pink material up. And those are my cut shapes. Uh, which have obviously the heat and bond on the back. Yeah, lovely heat and bond on the back. And I just put them into some sort of receptacle so that I don't use them. I don't really use them. So that's the first part. Uh, obviously, uh, the next thing to do on the computer is lay down the dress fabric and put a square of blue on, lay down the hat fabric and put a square a yellow on that has been treated with heat and bond um, and then take it to cut and do that you just follow through the next pieces okay so uh, I'll come back to you let's put my wax paper back on for a minute I'll come back to you and we need to go on to the next stage now which will be actually uh, hooping up 